The year was uh, 1981. I was 15. Uh, this was out on Long Island at Jones Beach. They had a swimming pool, and this guy walks up to me and he says, uh, "Hey, do you, do you know what the bathroom is?" And it, it all seemed innocent enough. And as this guy's asking, I'm thinking, I know this guy's voice, and it, 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 it dawns on me, he's the English guy on the radio that my mother listens to. Um, Jonathan King was his name, and I say, "Hey, you, I happen to know who you are. You're Jonathan King, right?" He's, he's like, yeah, and we we get to talking, and he's a charming, engaging guy, and. My motives were really, my mother, I don't want to say she was like a fanatic fan, it was just someone, she she was from England, and she listened to him, and I thought she might get a kick out of the fact that I met him, so that that was kind of my motive for, for talking to him, and he said, hey, listen, you know, uh, would you like to come into the city and tour the, the radio station we work at, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I was 15 at the time, and I thought, you know, this might lead to a job or something, you know, it was summertime, I was I'd never worked, and I thought, well, here, Here's an opportunity, so I forget the particulars, but I wound up uh, meeting him at the station, and we went through and toured, and no big deal, and he sort of casually mentioned that he only lived a few blocks away, and he was a record promoter, and he had records, and would I like some, and listen, I was naive enough not to realize that he was coming on to me. I thought, oh, cool, you know, I mean, he seemed like a nice enough guy, and He's not an imposing or threatening character, so I, was, and I felt comfortable with him, whatever, anyway, so we got to his apartment, and uh, he's, he's a sly fox, this guy, he, before, and listen, I mean, I'm a 15-year-old guy, I'm not saying I was innocent by any stretch, I, whatever, I just, all I'm trying to do is recount, honestly, an incident that happened that I know for a fact that this guy's guilty of what he's being accused of, and it just it fucking annoys me to no end that he's using his intelligence. I, I think he went to Cambridge. or he, He's got a, a very good education, and he's capable of um, deflection. Uh, and anyway, he somehow, out on his coffee table, there were a couple albums in plain sight, and one way or the other, they were opened up, and I started looking at them, and they were of orgies that had taken place in that very apartment, and uh, it was exciting to see those photos. I mean, you got to remember the years, 1981. Forget the easy access to pornography that there is today. Um, it just... In my life, it was very new to me, and the orgies had some very beautiful women involved. There wasn't a bunch of guys. Um, so, I mean, it didn't seem gay to me. It just all of a sudden I thought, even though I'd already had sex and some experiences, I and, and never had an interest in having sex with men. I um, in these pictures, they're obviously, obviously, you don't know. I'm telling you, but there were. Um, uh, women and together with women and guys and girls and guys and guys and my head started swimming a little thinking hey you know maybe this is uh the way things work and i'm looking at the quality of pussy in these uh albums and i'm like i might like to get involved in this and he invited me and uh, shortly afterwards he put a porno tape in there was a tv in his bedroom and he said hey you know why don't you jerk off and a watch and that didn't happen and I, I just started to get fucking uh, what's the word I'm looking for just skeeped out by the whole thing and I'm not I mean I respect the fact that he's bisexual and a very sexual guy but you shouldn't be fucking around with a fucking 15 year old and I'm not you know I'm inclined to sort of say hey shit happens and but uh, he obviously fucking balls on this guy. He winds up driving me back to, uh, he had this big blue Cadillac. I think he wrote some shitty song about the blue Cadillac. Um, but he drives me back to my apartment in Queens. He comes up and he, he sits and talks to my mother and father, you know, and my father's this, uh, very imposing Italian guy who would have beat the fucking shit out of him if I had told him what had happened and uh, you know I just I don't want to say it like that it's just I, I kept it to myself and 
they said I didn't, I didn't say I felt victimized. I just, as I said, this is just not his account of like, this guy's fucking bullshitting. So, these posts that I see where people defend him, or it's like, oh, they give it up. I know there have to be a multitude of people in your life that know you're totally full of shit, that you've been up to this for years. This wasn't an isolated incident with me. Um, nothing special about me. I'm another, just, at the time, I was just another fucking young guy that uh, you put the moves on. So, um, you know, that guy that tracked you down, I'm able to go on with my life and it didn't unravel because, you know, you, you tried to have sex with me. But, uh, you yeah, obviously pursued some people where you fucked them over. And uh, I, I fully understand why you want to deny um, who means the aggravation. You, you've got, everyone wants their freedom. And, I don't know how much money you have, but I, you'd rather be free than behind bars. <sighs> Whatever, man, you're, you're fucking phony on a fraud. And uh, don't even try to deny that, uh, well, you will try and maintain your innocence, but consider you only had shit to lose in the short term to admit that you, you know, you've done what you've done. But there is a heavy price to pay for living a lie, and you never get away with it long term. There are consequences. So at least consider the possibilities of a confession, what it might do. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, you might be able to look other people in the eyes and say you're innocent. Don't fucking try to show me, man. You know what happened. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe you question. I guess I'm done. I'm, I'm trying to just end on the right note of just saying, um, I mean, I guess people, for whatever reason, if anyone questions my veracity, is that the word? Um, I guess it's conceivable. I guess it is conceivable. I could just like randomly be making this shit up. What's my motive to come out and fucking lie about this? What do people lie all the time? I, mean, I could take your name out and say, hey, uh, George Clooney tried sucking my cock once, you know, whatever. But uh, um, I guess it's all a matter of credibility. And uh, people don't know me from that. And I got no reason to believe me. But uh, God, I, I think they. The average person that looks at the facts be hard pressed to fucking believe you. I look at these like videos that you're putting out. And you just you're you fucking demented. You're out of your mind. And somewhere in there's I don't know. Were you victimized? Uh, well, what happened to you? I just keep it real. You know, embrace possibly just coming clean and telling the truth and explaining yourself. It'd be far more interesting. Um, would it land you in jail? I don't know, but if you could somehow come out with the truth and avoid jail time, do it. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to protect. Um, I guess I fucked up Roman Polanski's life enough. But just uh, consider the potential to tell the truth. You know, as I said, um, my interaction with you in the scheme of my life of yours was just I don't, I don't necessarily expect you to remember me. It's a fucking long time ago, 81. We're coming up on 30 fucking years, 25 years ago. But, uh, I never forget. And, uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. Anyway, take care, Jonathan. I mean, hmm. Fuck you. You want chocolate, Fucking douchebag.